All right, everyone. So this is a, just a really quick little lesson I made for lab for the epithelial tissues. Normally in lab, we would be using the microscope and examining these ourselves. Um, but I'm just going to make a quick PowerPoint for epithelial tissues. And then sometime later today, I'll also be making one for connective tissues for your lab exam that happens um, the end of this week. Okay, so also it would also help you to go ahead and, and look over the PowerPoints and I'll be making videos for chapters four and five today and putting them up. So if the, um, you can watch the chapter four videos on epithelials and connectives before Friday's lab practical, it will help you a whole lot. Okay, so epithelial tissues this is the group of primary tissues that make, are making membranes and coverings in different areas of the body. And it's a very simple tissue. We have a glue layer at the bottom called the basement membrane. And then stuck to that glue layer, I have rows and rows and rows of cells. And then eventually the cells stop and the top surface of the last row of cells is called the apical surface. So all of our epithelial tissues are again just a basement membrane, cells, and then an apical surface. A lot of times they're arranged in sheets, but if you think about it, if I take a sheet of paper and I curl it around on itself, I can also make a tube. So we're going to make lots of tubes. Can you think of any sheets or tubes in your body? I bet you can. So epithelial tissues are going to be used to build those sheets and tubes. Okay, now there are different kinds of epithelial tissues and we classify what each tissue type is based on two criteria. This is the easiest classification system ever. The first thing you look at is how many rows of cells exist between the basement membrane, which is again just a glue layer, and the apical surface. And you only have two choices. You have choice number one, there's one row. There's only one row of cells on the basement membrane and that same row of cells is the apical layer. Then we're gonna give that tissue, the first term of its name is going to be simple. It will be a simple tissue, okay? If there's anything else, if there's more than one all the way up to infinity, we're going to call that tissue stratified. Now strata, means layers, and in order to have layers, you must have at least two, correct? So if you have one row, it is a simple epithelium. If you have more than one row, it is a stratified epithelium. Now that's only half of the classification. The second criterion, which gives you its second part of its name, is what is the shape of the cells in the apical row? Doesn't matter what, if there's more than one row, it does not matter what the shape of the cells are if they're not the top row. Only the top row. The top row, we're gonna look at that. Now, if there is only one row of cells, obviously that is the important row, right? Okay, so we're gonna look at the apical row and there are three possible shapes. There's short and flat, there's kind of square, and there's tall and skinny and each of these has a name. If the cells on the top row are short and flat, might be calling them squatty, they have a round nucleus, and they might have an overall appearance like this. Now, cells don't have corners, this is just an approximation. We're going to call them squamous or squamous. You can say it either way, both are acceptable, okay? If the cells have almost a about as tall as they are wide, so almost a squarish or cubish appearance. They're also gonna have a very round nucleus inside. We're going to say that they are cuboidal. You can hear the word cube in there. And if instead of being flat or squarish, they are tall and skinny like a column, we're going to call them columnar. So you take these two criteria and you're going to get the names of six of the eight epithelial tissues, okay? So let's go to the next slide and put it together. So if I have one row of short squatty cells, and my basement membrane here is red, I would say that the name of this tissue is simple squamous. Now, if you look at this tissue from the edge is when they look kind of flat and short, but if you look at a simple squamous tissue from above, it actually kind of looks like a tile floor. Notice these nuclei don't look round, but if I look at them from the top, they look round and they're kind of laying flat because the edge of the cell would actually be over here. And in this image, the basement membrane would be behind my computer screen, okay? Let's say I have a basement membrane and I have a bunch of all different kinds of shaped cells 
but at the very top I have a row of flat cells. Well then this tissue would be called stratified squamous. Okay, two rows of cells with the top row flat, stratified, because it's more than one row, the top row is flat, squamous. Okay, how about the other ones? If I take some kind of square-ish, now it's not this, this is actually three-dimensional cubes, sorry, I'm limited with my PowerPoint shapes. But if I took a bunch of cubes and I arranged them in a ring, and I have the basement membrane around the outside, that is one row of cells between the basement membrane and the apical surface, which would be in here. This would be simple cuboidal tissue. We often use simple cuboidal to make tubes and ducts. Now, the I said the apical surface wasn't here, but if this is a tube, then this is actually the center of the tube where things would be inside the tube. And we give this another name. We call it a lumen. Okay, so this would be an example of simple cuboidal. And then over here, if I have one row of tall, narrow cells with an oval-shaped nucleus, this tissue would be called simple columnar. Now, I designed this particular slide for a particular reason. These are the four tissues that we are going to hold you responsible for for epithelial tissues for the lab exam. So these are the only four that you're going to have to identify on site for the lab exam. Okay, and I have put images of these tissues in the next rest of this PowerPoint, in the next few slides. These are the exact images we will use on the test. So in your lab assignments book for the tissues, you will see a list of features for each tissue that you're supposed to know. And so I have labeled them in this PowerPoint. So this is a photomicrograph of simple squamous epithelium. And notice I told you you're looking at it from the top. This is the only view we have in the lab of simple squamous. So we don't have an edge view. And the things you were supposed to identify are the nucleus. So all of these, each one of these is a cell. So this large dark circle in the middle is the nucleus. The membrane would be around the edge of the cell. And the cytoplasm would be everything between the membrane and the nucleus. Okay, now let's talk about simple squamous. What is it? Look like it's a single row of flat cells with a large central nucleus, but it looks like a tile floor if you're looking at it from above. The job of simple squamous. This is the skinniest, shortest, thinnest membrane you can create. And so it is very good at the process of diffusion. When you need things to pass from one area to another, you want a very thin space. And so we put it in places where diffusion is important, like the lung air sacs and the walls of capillaries. Okay, so that's one of the tissues you have to know for lab. Simple cuboidal epithelium. So if you look at this ring in here, this is a ring of one row of square-ish cells. They have round nuclei, right? So this is the nucleus, so here's one labeled up here. Inside the center here would be the lumen, and the basement membrane is this blue line that runs around the outside. Now, how do we describe simple cuboidal? A single row of square cells with a round central nucleus, often arranged in a ring, but not always, used for tubules. So the function of cuboidal tissue is for secretion, and where you would find it is kidney tubules and gland ducts. Now, for lab, we're only looking at simple cuboidal. We're not looking at stratified cuboidal, but for the lecture exam, you will have to know what stratified cuboidal, in addition to simple cuboidal, is good for, okay, and what it would look like. All right, I'm gonna show you a closer view of one of these rings of cells, or two of these rings of cells. So again, each of these is a simple cuboidal epithelial cell. The lumen is inside the tube that's formed, and the basement membrane is around the outside, and here's the nucleus of each of these cells. Okay, so that's tissue two. So we have had simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar. You see the word column in the name. And so what, was, what would it look like? A single row of tall cells with an oval-shaped nucleus. Now notice, these cells in here are not your simple columnar. Just like these cells out here were not your simple cuboidal. You have to find the tissue that we're interested in. This is the area where we see the tall, skinny cells. So this is where the simple columnar is. Now, the job of columnar epithelium, it's really good at absorption. So if you think of parts of your body that need to absorb things like nutrients, 
Well, then you can figure out where we would find it. You would find it in the digestive tract, the stomach, the small intestines, and the large intestines. Now, here's a closer view of that one. I wanted to point things out. So my basement membrane would be right along this edge here, okay, below the tall, skinny cells. Each of these elongated purple shapes here is a nucleus. And so each one of these is a simple columnar epithelial cell. Also, you'll notice there's this, this kind of fuzzy border at the top. Those are the microvilli, which have increased surface area for absorption. And then every once in a while, like here and here, you'll notice that there's this big white wine glass shaped cell. That is called a goblet cell. And a goblet cell is a one-celled mucin gland. And if you've already read ahead into chapter four, you know that mucin glands produce this protein, it's a sugared protein called mucin, and they spew it out. And once it combines with water, it creates something called mucus. And mucus is used for lubrication and it's sticky and it cleans things, okay? So all of this is a feature of simple columnar epithelium. So that's three of our four epithelial tissues that you're responsible for recognizing on site. On the lab exam, you will see the pictures, but you won't have any of the labels. You'll just have arrows. And it won't be these arrows. I put my arrows in, but the arrows for the test might not look exactly the same. Okay, the last of the epithelial tissues that you have to know on site for the lab exam is stratified squamous epithelium. Now, stratified means there's more than one layer. So this is the only epithelium for the lab exam that is going to have more than one layer. That's it. You won't be giving me the answer of stratified cuboidal or stratified columnar because we didn't ask you to learn those for lab, okay? So to describe it, it's many rows of variously shaped cells with a flat top row. And here's my flat top row. The job of stratified squamous is protection. You have lots of layers of cells in areas where you're going to have friction that will wear them away. So you want to have backup layers underneath. And where do you find it? Well, you find it in the epidermis of your skin, which is what this slide is from. You'll find it in your mouth and in your esophagus. Now, mouth and esophagus, if you've ever eaten tortilla chips and the scratchy little edges have poked you in the throat and in the mouth, you'll be very happy that you have those extra layers of skin so that you don't get cut. All right, now looking at this, all of this lighter pink tissue down here is not the stratified squamous. This is actually the dermis of the skin. And this is where the epidermis begins. So the basement membrane here follows the shape of where we change colors between the light pink and the dark pink. And that is also the border between the papillary layer of the dermis and the epidermis. So the entire epidermis would be this stratified squamous epithelium. Okay? All right. So those are the epithelial tissues that you have to know for the lab exam. All right. Happy studying.